When I was 19, he visited for the first time. It was very late, and the bedroom was pitch black. Miles, he whispered. Miles, can you hear me? My eyes were wide, but only darkness met them. I couldn't see who was talking. Yeah? I whispered back. A few more years, he cooed into my left ear. Just wait another few years, and you'll learn who I am. I reached out, trying to touch the producer of the voice. My hands grabbed the air. I turned over, and I groped for the bedside lamp and flipped the switch. Pale light poured into the bedroom. I was alone. I didn't realize at the time that that would be a constant a theme. It's now been 18 years since I was visited that night. I spent it by myself. I wish I could call those years happy and productive. They were, in fact, the opposite. I'm depressed, unemployable, mentally ill is the official term that lets me collect money for doing nothing but sit at home all day. Well, not quite nothing. I daydream. I fantasize about the man who spoke to me that night. I picture him swooping in and knocking on my door, bringing riches and surprises that would heal my ruined psyche and and he'd be my guardian angel. A heavenly respite from my day-to-day -day misery. For nearly two decades, those dreams went unrealized. Until last night. Mile. The voice woke me from my turbulent sleep. I grasped and batted at the nearby light switch. The room illuminated. No one was there. I know you can hear me, the voice whispered. It came from what sounded like only a, a few feet in front of me. I blinked, trying to get my eyes acclimated to the brightness. It, it didn't help. I saw an empty bedroom. Yeah, I replied. I can. Please, where are you? I'm here. I never left your side for all these years. Goose flesh rose along my spine. There was a quality to the voice I recognized, but I couldn't place it. I want to see you, I insisted. Soon, he promised. But just listen for a moment. Can you do that? I nodded. Where I am, nothing hurts, Miles. There's no feeling. I'm not being good enough. No feeling of failure. Everything is peaceful. Everything is warm. Everything is soft. No edges. No harshness. I know how hard you've reached for those things. And I know you've stumbled every time. Tears fell into my beard. He really did know me. He continued. I want you to close your eyes and imagine being warm. Picture yourself being loved and cherished, full of untapped potential. See yourself as someone who is adored. I closed my eyes and did as I was told. I pictured myself at the foot of my mother's bed. I was six, maybe seven. It was winter. Warm air from the heater was drifting across the room and making me feel snug and cozy. I'd just woken from a nap. I stretched out and I stared at the ceiling. An innocent smile formed on my young face. A kind voice broke the silence. Mom was calling me down for supper. I called back and told her I was coming. The bedspread smelled sweet, like her perfume, like her embraces. Cancer would take her from me a year later. The fantasy collapsed. I began to sob. When you open your eyes, 
you'll see something that may shock you. It might frighten you, but give it a second because you'll know what you see is the solution to all this misery you've been forced to endure. Are you ready for that? I am. Okay. You can open your eyes. My eyelids lifted. The sight of a decaying, hideously disfigured man. My breath caught in my throat. The majority of his head was missing. A Y incision spanned his grayish-green chest and torso. Insect eggs and larva caked the puckered edges of the crater that had once been his face. What? What is this? I choked out. It's okay. I promise, he reassured me. I had no idea how he was speaking. His mouth was lost in the chaos of decaying gore. Listen, came the voice, and look at me. Look at my arms. He held out his rotting limbs for me to see. In the back of my mind, I was thankful there was no smell. I studied what he presented. The flesh was pockmarked and patchy. Things wriggled and spasmed beneath the surface. Up at the top, near the shoulders, were three heavy scars. I gasped. The room spun violently as if I'd, I'd been hit on the side of the head. There, he said. Now you see? I leaned back against the headboard and tried to regain my composure. He spoke again. I'm not lying when I said this was the best and only decision I could have made. I had to get out. I had to find out if the other side is better than what I was enduring in miles. It was. It is. And I needed to come and tell you because I worry you remain as you are. Desperate. Lonely. Miserable. I traced my fingers over my upper arms and I asked, Is mom and dad there? Mom and dad, you can finally meet him. What happens to you? The flayed muscle on the shattered skull twitched and after a second I recognized he was smiling. Everything comes together. It all works out. So I just do it. He nodded the stump above his shoulders. Under the chin worked for me. I glanced at the shotgun I kept next to the bed. Okay. I hope we can see you soon, Miles. I promise it only gets better. He disappeared into thin air. That was six hours ago. Ever since cleaned my apartment and I've settled up a few things around here for the first time since I was a little boy. I felt hopeful. I felt excited. The scars on my upper arm tingled like they always do when I'm nervous. After last night, though, I i don't think I have a reason to be. I've wasted so much time being miserable, full of hatred for myself. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to make it better. And now's my chance. Something tells me that in just a few minutes, I'll be waking up at the foot of Mom's bed. After a long nap. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and once again, it's the end of tonight's video, so I want to tell you all thank you for listening or watching however you hear my voice. Whether it be on YouTube or on the podcast, thank you so much for being here with me. There's going to be a new story every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday night right here on YouTube, or 
if you're not watching on YouTube. That means the podcast gets updated on SoundCloud, Apple, Google Play, and now the podcast is on Spotify. So if it's easier for you guys to listen there than it is to listen on YouTube, then hey, not such a bad deal, right? As always, any support you guys give towards Mr. Creepypasta Storytime really does help me out. I can actually keep the lights on in the house, and I can get nice little cat treats for Hercules. Okay, sorry for taking up so much of your time. Thank you guys for listening once again. And sweet dreams. <laughs>